Hey, it's review time. I'm gonna talk about cryotherapy in this video. I'm gonna talk about whether it's worth your money and worth your time. And I'm gonna look at two different scenarios for you. I'm gonna look at the scenario of the athlete, and I'm gonna look at the scenario for someone that's interested in longevity, and really their life expectancy and their life extension when it comes to cryotherapy. But in case you don't know what cryotherapy is, it's those big tanks that you hop in that drop you down to negative 100 degrees Celsius or negative 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So a significant, significant drop in temperature. Well, let's get into the studies and let's talk about cryotherapy for the athlete and whole body cryotherapy for someone that has a chronic illness and is looking for life extension. Okay, so in a 2014 study by the Open Source Journal of Sports Medicine, it was found that there was really no significant improvement in functional recovery of athletes. However, there was an improvement when it came to perceived recovery, perceived fatigue, and perceived soreness. What does this ultimately mean? What this means to us is that there is no evidence of actually healing the body faster when it comes to sports activity or when it comes to healing your muscle. But there is an impact in terms of soreness and there is an impact in terms of fatigue. Now, whether or not that's a placebo effect is still up in the air, but here's the thing. Perception is reality, and athletes know this. If you feel like it's working, and it is helping your soreness, and it is helping your fatigue, then at the end of the day, whether it's placebo or not, it is helping you. Now, a lot of studies are showing that the effects of whole body cryotherapy, at least on an athlete, could be simply central nervous system related. You see, we're bouncing back and forth between that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system by going into a cold temperature like that. That can cause a release of endorphins that can help you feel better. Well, if those endorphins are what you need to feel better, then there's a serious benefit there. But at the end of the day, when we look at how the body works, our skin acts as a barrier. Our skin acts as a barrier to protect us from those elements and protect us from colder temperatures like that. So the internal difference in temperature doesn't really change that much. So the skin is acting as that barrier and the skin's getting cold, but it's not really affecting our muscles all that much. Now on that note, when it comes to athletes, there was a study that found that there was a pretty significant increase in strength directly after cryotherapy treatments, which again, it could be a biased study, but at the end of the day, it looks like it could be something neurological, something nervous system related. It's kind of like if you were to hop in a cold shower, you might be amped up and ready to roll. Okay, so now let's look at it from a chronic illness standpoint. And I want you to keep listening, even if you're an athlete, because I'm gonna give you my overall consensus on the big picture here in just a minute. Okay, so if you have a chronic illness, which is exactly what cryotherapy was originally formulated for, Cryotherapy may be a very good thing for you to look into. You see, in a recent study in 2016, it was found that those that suffered from multiple sclerosis and chronic fatigue syndrome, basically both autoimmune conditions, had significant improvements using whole body cryotherapy, but also had a pretty serious reduction in inflammation. See, what this tells us is that the long-term use of cryotherapy is really where the benefits come in. And another study in 2014 looked at those that had what's called an adhesive capsulitis of the shoulder. Now, in simple terms, it's basically where you lose that shoulder mobility. So it happens to lifters a lot, it happens to swimmers a lot. Well, they found that after four weeks of treatment with cryotherapy, there was a significant improvement in that adhesive capsulitis over the control group that only did physiotherapy with no whole body cryotherapy. So that's pretty remarkable right then and there. So what this tells us is we have to be patient. See, if we're looking for the ultimate benefits of cryotherapy, it may not be something that happens immediately. Just like training, it all takes time and recovery takes time. So if you're interested in living for a long time, you're interested in being on the field for a long time, you're interested in being in the gym for a long time and maintaining that stamina overall, then cryotherapy is clearly showing to be something that is gonna be extremely important for overall long-term health. And if you're someone that's dealing with an autoimmune condition, it's looking like cryotherapy might be something that is well worth spending the money on. So at the end of the day, remember that perception is always reality. And if you feel good using cryotherapy, it's worth the money, even if you're an athlete and you're only looking for that immediate gain. But if you're really not wanting to spend the money, you can get a lot of benefit out of surrounding yourself with ice packs. But if you're wanting to live for a long time, it's looking like cryotherapy might be showing some very positive signs. As always, keep it locked in here in my videos. Let me know in the comment section below what kind of videos you want to see next, and I will always read them and take them into consideration. We'll see you soon.